Master Lo. Pass it down. Welcome back. I hope you're ready, so let's get started. Now, the first technique I'm going to teach you today is called clutching feathers. Now, clutching feathers is a unique technique now. It's going to teach more than just hitting your opponent just to hit him or to injure him. You're going to find out in this technique that the injury you cause to your opponent is going to be a very sophisticated move because it's going to cause certain things to happen in your opponent. Now, with the help of Rick, hi, Rick, how are you? Clutching feathers. When we speak of feathers, we refer to the hair in the Kempo vocabulary. Now, as Rick grabs me, okay, why he's grabbing me could be for many reasons. He could be pulling my head down because he's going to cross punch me with the right hand, or he could be pulling me into a knee, or whatever. But what I've got to do, I've got to get rid of that grab. And I've got to do it in a way that I'm not hit in the process, and I don't lose my hair. So as I make my first move, what I've got to do is create distance for me in that punch. So I'm going to pin Rick's hand because I want to isolate that grab. I want to regain control. And normally in the Kimball system, when we pin a hand, it's because we want to gain control back again. So I pin the hand. I step back away from that hand. It also puts weight on Rick's 
left leg. Okay, now that's an angle of disturbance. We put weight up there, so at that point we're canceling his height. He can't kick when there's weight on that leg. Now, the width is canceled on Rick, as you learned in my previous tape, because of me pulling. All right, at this point now, I'm gonna strike a nerve just right under his armpit into the lymph nodes there. Now, the nerve is gonna be struck with a middle knuckle. A regular fist, if he squeezes my hair, hold on tight, Rick, is not gonna transfer into those nerves, but a middle knuckle, or what we used to call the dragon's head, will reach it. Now, this, I, I'm pinning as I step back, and as I plant, bam, I go right to the nerve, okay? That nerve's gonna send a signal right up the arm to let go of the hair, okay? And it's gonna further get Rick away from and off of me. Okay, now, in this technique, as I strike, I simultaneously, at that point, rake down his arm, pivot to a right forward bow, and do a left heel palm, thrusting heel palm, to the bridge of his nose or this chin, depending upon the the position of Rick's head as I do this. Okay, now watch this again. Be together, Rick. He steps in and grabs my hair. I step back to get away from getting hit, put some weight on his leg, make my first strike. If he follows up, if he starts to come after me, then this is supported by my stance change into a forward bow. This is all I want you to do for the orange belt level. It's not hard, it's a little sophisticated, but don't forget, as you pin, the head moves back with the leg, so the body works as one unit. I don't want to see this. I don't want you to pin, keep the head here, and then pull back. You'll get hit before you get done. Now, the pin and a step, as he starts to punch, everything works together all at once. Everything happens together. And like I said, basically, this is a follow-up. If Rick tries to re-grab or come in with a punch, then we have the follow-up at this point. Thank you, Rick. Good. The next technique is called triggered salute. Now, you're going to find this fascinating technique. Now, this is designed against somebody pushing you. Now, in this technique, you're going to take the angle of least resistance. Now, when I say least resistance, uh, I don't have to, want that to be misleading. All right, now, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Clyde, can I borrow you for a second? Thank you. Now, this is a push from his right arm to your left shoulder. Now, as Clyde pushes, the natural reaction is to be shoved back this way. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to train you that as he pushes to take an angle that will absorb this force, okay? Now, there's a number of ways you can do this. If he's pushing, push, I could step over, okay? Or I could step back, push with my left leg. And these are two angles of least resistance, okay? But the trouble with those is that they don't give me a target. Now, if I step in as he pushes, there's another angle, go ahead, push, climb, of least resistance, but it gives me a what? It gives me a target. Generally, there's three angles of least resistance in a technique, all right? But you've got to find the one that also gives you a target. It's not just enough to move away from it, okay? All right, so in our defense, remember in the other tapes, as I explained, is our offense. Now, on this push, when Clyde does push, what we're going to do, we're going to check the hand, we're going to take back, and we're going to check his knee, and we're going to heel palm at the same time. So we have three things that are going to happen, the check, the knee, and the heel palm strike. And I want you to consider the knee down here as a strike as well. All right, now, <coughs> as we move, I want you to think of this kind of like a, a gunslinger, a fast draw, in that when he pushes, bam, I move from down from where my, my hand is, just like if I was drawing a pistol. And as I move in, bam, everything moves from here in one motion. Okay, I'll slow it down just a little bit. What I don't want to see is this because that's going to indicate that I'm coming, Clyde's going to see it, and he could block it or prepare for it, okay? But if you do this right, if the guy pushes, boom, he'll, he should not see this hit, nor should he see the knee check hit as well. Okay, now, as we move on this technique, we have three points, three target points on a circle. One, two, three. The hinge of the jaw or the chin, down to the bicep, to the solar plexus. That's going to be the first circle that we're going to work on. So that means we're going to do this slow. As Clyde pushes, we heel palm, 
bring him back in with the shape of the crane, slip it off, and hit the solar plexus with the elbow. Now, I say the shape of the crane because I'm going to fashion my arm so it looks like a bird's head in its neck. And what that does, as we hit Clyde on the heel palm, it raises him up on his toes. Now, that checks his height. It also checks his width. He can't punch or hit me. Go ahead, punch. He can't kick because I've shoved weight suddenly up, so he's on his toes. But now, I want to bring him back into range, so I come down hard onto the bicep, bringing him back down, again, controlling his height. He can't kick at that point, and it brings him into my elbow. Now, this in itself is also a strike, okay? Now, what I mean is, is when Clyde is up here, and I bring him back down, it's not just raking, but this part of your wrist actually hits and connects onto the bicep. Reason for that is because we want a dead arm, meaning we don't want him grabbing suddenly because he's been hit, go ahead and grab me, and pulling and yanking me around with that arm. So if I come off and deaden that arm, I don't have to worry about that as much. Also, it brings him back in for the elbow. The elbow comes back to the ribs, and then we're going to do an inverted punch to the chin at that point. That'll be the end of the technique. Now, I want to show you something else. If he comes over here, <coughs> from this angle, as I bring him in and I hit the solar plexus, I'm going to come back to the floating rib. I'm going to let my back knuckle slip and catch the kidney. Okay? That's going to be icing on the cake if you can do it fine. All right, now watch again. He pushes up, down, back. Okay, the elbow hits the back knuckle, and then we drive him back up. All right, now the important thing on this technique is to remember, like I said before, shoot, that we move all at once. The knee check, the hand pin, and the heel palm all at one time. Don't stop the circle. Round the corner. That's an elongated circle. <laughs> That's important to remember because in Kempo we just don't stop and then start. But we round it, bringing him back in to the action. Okay? I'll do it one more time, a little slower. We go one, two, three, and four. You're done with your technique? Thank you, Clyde. Good. The next technique is Dance of Death. With the help of Rick. Rick, thank you, Rick. All right, now Rick's going to shoot a straight right punch, okay? Now, I'm going to teach this for two attacks, one for a step-through right punch and the other one for a shuffle right punch. I'm going to do a step-through first. Now, I'm going to start feet together. Rick's going to be in a left neutral bow. He's coming from 12 o'clock. As he punches, I'm going to step in and do a left inward block. Now, this is part of that family grouping where we use sleeper and we also use thundering hammer. And if you remember, if you look at it from this angle over here, as he shoots the punch, my hand's already draped down and it's going to move from point of origin. Now, depending upon where Rick's hand is again, if it's down low, then I can use Sundering Hammer or I could go up to the sleeper like we learned before. But in this case, the hand's up, he has a check as he comes through with a punch. So I'm going to go to the third one, down to the groin area. Okay, now watch again. He shoots the punch, boom, makes the block, boom, chop to the groin. Now this block turned into a check as I chop to the groin area. Okay, now I'm going to take you back to this angle over here so you can see the rest of the technique. He makes the punch, left inward block, left neutral bow. Forward bow, chop to the groin. Now at this point, if you hit him hard enough, his hands are going to go down there. I want you to take your left leg, make an adjustment, and move around his lead leg also cutting off the line of entry to your groin. At that point, you're going to step through and start to buckle. Now, that's going to help Rick on his way down. As you begin to buckle, this elbow hits into the solar plexus or the ribs. As you pull up his leg, it's a push-pull affair. This is what we're doing. It's what's taking our opponent down. Rick, come on up again. It's smooth and it's easy, and you'll find that the knee buckle helps this continuity, and I'll show you what I mean. We block, chop him in the groin, knee, and take down all at once. Make sure you pull up and hold on the back of that ankle of Rick as you end up in a right neutral bow. Okay, Rick. <coughs> now, I'm going to show you another version of this, and we're going to do it from this angle over here. And he's going to do a shuffle right punch. 
Now, as he comes in, we're going to block it, chop to the groin. Nothing really changes except we don't have the knee buckle now. So we're going to step straight through, drive him, and push him over. Okay, come on up, Rick. Now, with the help of Crystal, thank you, Crystal. Now, she's going to do the same technique, but as she takes Rick down, she's going to pull up sharply on his right leg. Okay, let's go ahead. Now, boy, right there, very nice. Now, you notice that when she pulled up, she kept his rear end or his hip off the ground. Pull up a little more for Rick Crystal. And that's important because we're taking a pivot point away from Rick. If she, if she puts his hip back down, go ahead, start to maneuver. Rick can maneuver around and twist and turns, but if she pulls up sharply at that point, he loses that ability. Okay, now, come on back up. Let's try this again. Now I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna take your place for a second, Rick. Crystal, are you ready? Move up just a little bit. You can play with this in a little different scenario. I'm gonna be more of a boxer, and Crystal is already gonna be set up more in a neutral stance, like a Kim Forrest. Okay, Crystal, you're here. Now what I'm gonna do with this technique is I'm gonna jab as a feint, or to get her attention up here. Then I'm gonna shuffle with a right cross. And this is where this technique really comes into play. And what I mean is that if he's so aware of himself up here, but he's not conscious from the waist down, Crystal's gonna take advantage of that. So as I jab here, she doesn't go for the jab, but she goes for the right cross and goes underneath and catches in the groin area. Good. Rick, you wanna do that for me? So Rick plays more of the boxer. He jabs, but then he shuffles in or steps in with the right cross. Go ahead, all the way through. Good. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Rick. Good. Think about this, okay? Now, it's written, we have it taught as a step through right punch, but I want you to practice it as a shuffle, okay? You can see the value behind it. Great. <laughs> next technique is called gift of destruction. All right, now, usually when you talk about fighting and defending yourself, you don't think of a gift. This is a, this is a uh, defense against a handshake. Now, why do we say about a handshake? Well, why would I want to defend myself against a handshake? It's very important because, you know, like they say, sometimes in a handshake lies a snake. Masood, can you help me over here? All right, with the help of Masood, now, you know, people will do f funny things when they're, when they're shaking hands, meaning that if I walk up to somebody off the street and I don't know him and I say, hey, how you doing? The guy will instinctively, nine times out of ten, shake hands with me. Now, I could pull him into my car, okay, I could put him in an arm lock, I could do a number of things. I could put a knife into his rib or whatever, all right? So what you got to do is understand that just because something's nice doesn't mean it's not harmful to you. Uh, I've had occasions where I've talked to people who have been at uh, parties or occasions where people are drinking or whatever and a guy's shaking hands and they get a little macho, and one guy tries to squeeze the finger of the other guys and tries to break it, you know, show how strong he is. Whatever the case is, I want you to know how to get away from it. What's dangerous about a handshake is the pull, meaning that he can pull you into a punch. And if it happens, he will inadvertently control your width, your height, and your depth just by pulling. Now, we learned in the other videos in freestyling how to control the depth zones of your opponent. Well, here it applies again. All right, now, get the destruction. Masood's grabbed my hand, he's squeezing my fingers, he won't let go of me. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heel palm the outside of his right elbow, and I'm gonna do a right knee to the groin, okay? I want him hit twice. I wanna make sure that this isn't gonna be holding on to me. If I just knee him in the groin, and he starts to fall, he may hold on to this and pull me down, because he's still hurting. So I don't want that holding on to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heel palm here, and at the same time, pull his arm, because I don't wanna get hit. Particularly, if I see that arm start to come my way, I'm going to pull it to control that width. I don't, I'm going to step to a zone of sanctuary, and I'm going to control the width of his body. Now, as that happens, it exposes the elbow, okay? Now, as he punches, boom, I knee to the groin, I break the elbow, I check the arm, I come down on the inside of his right knee, which begins to do what? It begins to turn his head into my elbow, and that's the last shot of it. Now, watch it over here at this angle. His left arm starts to come. I knee to the groin, I control his width, I check that arm, and here's where I come down on that knee. 
Watch his head start to turn into the elbow. Keep that arm checked. And as you come down, hit to the hinge of the jaw of the elbow and you're out. That's how it's done. It's simple, but you've got to understand to control that side of his body. Also, when you pull down on the arm, it puts weight on his legs, so you're controlling his height at that point, too. Thank you, Master. Good. The next technique is locking horns. Now, this is a good technique. Now, like chokes and holds, or any technique that you're dealing with somebody's arm wrapped around your neck, you've got to keep your breathing constant. If you don't, you can't finish the technique. Now, particularly on this technique, you know, with the help of Clyde, thank you, Clyde. It's gonna get me in a front headlock, okay? Now, what I wanna do is turn my chin away from his inside of his arm and tuck it in so he can't cut off my wind supply. I don't want that arm up there cutting it off because I won't be able to do this technique, all right? Now, as he puts some pressure on, I'm going to step in with my head turned in, and I'm going to raise his arm up so you can see me. But I'm going to be in a right closed kneel stance because I'm I need a brace to go up against his weight as he's leaning on me, okay? Now, I want my left hand to check the inside of that leg. As this hand hits the groin with a reverse hand sword, that becomes a check to that knee. If he tries to knee me with the left, that won't come through. If the right tries to hit, I'm checking down there. All right, it's important. If you don't, a common thing for a headlock is for somebody to get you in and use his knees on you. So what we want to do is we want to check those lines of entries. We don't want those knees coming up into our face. Okay, now as he puts me back in the headlock, put some pressure on me, and he bends me down, boom, I hit the groin. All right, now from that point, I want you to turn to a neutral bow. I want you to rip the groin here. I want you to contour his body, and I want you to do an obscure elbow, bringing Clyde up. Now, the last move is to shuffle in and sandwich the jaw. I want you to guarantee that that jaw is going to be in line. So as I bring Clyde up, I'm going to bring him back down with a heel palm here. Bam! And then bring the elbow across the jaw at that point. Okay, let's take it from the beginning. Now watch again. He grabs, he puts some pressure. Whack! I hit, grab, rip. Make sure that this hand hits. Come across with the elbow. Okay, let's move Clyde over. We're going to change the angle. That way you can see what we're doing over here. Okay, grab me, Clyde. He applies the pressure. I move in and check. Hit the groin. The hands will spring out. He'll protect himself. Generally, the hands go down here. He may even grab my hand. And that's why we put a claw here to keep that from happening. All right, now, as we hit the jaw, bring him back in. Bring this hand around so it hinges here and acts as a what? A backing board for the elbow. This was here, now it comes up from this point and hits him here. Thank you, Clyde. Good. The next technique is called lone kimono. Now, this is kind of a famous technique in the Kempo system, and it was probably the first technique that I learned back when I was a kid. Now, what's unique about this is that it really shows the side of Kempo that's very pragmatic. Okay, now, with the help of Rick. Okay, now, if I'm being grabbed, most guys grab for two reasons. Number one, they want to grab to pull you into a punch. Okay, jerk you around, okay. Some people grab because in essence, they're really afraid, and they're going to try and hopefully frighten you, okay, shake you up a little bit by grabbing. But I don't want to try and second guess that. If somebody's grabbing me, I'm not so worried about the grab as much as I am worried about the hand that's not grabbing me or the leg that's down there. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin Rick's hand, and like I always say, when you pin, you take back control, or at least a piece of it. And I'm going to step back into a right neutral bow. Now, at this point, I'm pulling weight on Rick's leg, all right, and I'm controlling his width, his height and his width, and his depth. He can't run away, he can't run into me, okay, and he can't kick me. Now, that's the first move. Generally, when guys grab like this, so they grab and they twist and try to pull you into an action. So as he grabs and twists, I borrow that twist. Since he's twisting this way, we're going to borrow that force, and we're going to use it to our advantage. It's going to take his elbow, and it's going to rotate it, and you'll look at it from this angle. As he grabs and twists, he puts his elbow exactly where 
I know it's going to be. And that's how I'm going to break it. I can't break it with the arm bent because I'll probably hurt my own arm because that's a, that's a fixed point there. So what I have to do is step back, elongate that arm, the elbow's underneath, and yes, now I can break it. All right, so from here, he twists his own arm up in getting ready to punch, I pin, drop back to my neutral, and do an upward block against his what? His elbow, and at the same time, I push down, snapping that arm. Boom. They both work together. In my defense, stepping back is also my offense. Now, if you look at it from this angle, he grabs me, twists it up, I go with it, snap that arm. Okay, now, if I need a secondary break, I got one from this angle. All right? Everything's a follow-up in Kempo. It's icing on the cake. If we need it, if he starts to come back again, I rake the arm, and if I do it hard enough, it's going to cancel the width so I don't have to deal with that punch. Now, if you look again, my intentions are I want to snap his elbow. Hopefully, that's enough. He would let go, fall, out of pain, whatever. If I see that arm start to come, I rake this one. And then from this point, <laughs> chop him in the throat. Everything's a follow-up, okay? It's not that we're trying to overkill as much as we're trying to teach you to be overskilled in case something else happens. One, two, and three, right in the throat. Keep the left hand up as a check. Sometimes I put it down when I'm talking, but I want you to keep it up as a check. Thank you, Rick. Good.